investors who have so obviously bet big on this company already. Yes, Chris Jesse thinks Twitter will stand up to its valuation here. He has clients buy ads on Twitter. But Larry Fishel's been here at Post 9 expecting stocks to go down from here to reality. Okay, welcome to you both. Uh, Chris, Jesse, first to you, why does Twitter go higher from here? There is no other social network today that drives more immediate, effective ad revenue for my clients. It's about generating ad revenue. Larry, is it just a problem? Is it too expensive? Is that why you don't like it here? You're talking about just generating ad revenue. It's way, way, way overvalued, overpriced. There's very, if we talk about Twitter, there's only 250 million users when most of their business is outside the U.S. with 200 plus million in revenue. They're unprofitable. They're not making any money. This thing's going to stand still. We're going to see a reality check, I believe, in a half an hour now. Well, Joe and Kelly. What do you think, Chris? Absolutely not. I mean, when, when the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society comes to us and we can generate $81,000 in revenue on in one day, Giving Tuesday, via Twitter, leveraging an app called Giver, there is absolutely no other platform that's the go-to platform. They're doing all of the right things. They're making certain that individuals can aggregate emails via the Twitter platform. It's a much more dynamic platform than even email marketing. If you were a true marketer, you would understand this. I understand there's the bombastic platitudes might work well for people that are getting skittish about the stock, but if you're in it day to day like Silverback Socialism on behalf of our clients, you understand that Twitter is the number one platform right now. Bombastic wow. platitudes. Wow. So they're the number Take one, that, but, they're not making, <laughs> but they're not making money in it. It's unprofitable. Don't yeah. Everyone likes the post office, but the post office doesn't make money you in know, it. Larry, so just because your point. clients uh, like it, it's a small number amount of, of clients compared to worldwide. I made this point yesterday. Yeah. Let, me, let me hit you with it as well. Take us back uh, 10 years after Google came public. There was a hue and cry about how expensive that stock was. How were they ever going to monetize this one-trick pony and grow it and find new revenue streams? And look what happened. C couldn't Twitter do the same thing? I don't believe so. The whole issue with Google is they were profitable. And when Facebook came out, they were profitable also. You're talking about $3 billion in revenue, a billion in profit. There's no profit here, and, and it's a bland model. So you might have some clients that like it. Everybody likes some product. But if you don't make money on the product, who cares? We're in the stock market to make money. So yeah, to like something, and, and there's a difference between liking a company and a stock. And I think this thing's going to start to go down. The problem is you need R&D money to continue to grow. It's okay. a bland model. you got to go mainstream. you got to go e-commerce. They, they don't have that. A bland model? Listen, what, when the least blood cancer comes to us and says, start a conversation with 18 to 25-year-old donors, and there are 5.3 million people tweeting throughout the course of the Super Bowl, and we can parachute in as the least blood cancer I'm and be part of a conversation and be, and be part of a conversation, a conversation like that. was Here's only up by 3%. This year over last year. You Tremendous think that's a quality engagement? in that class. That's a terrible engagement. Treme 3%. Ridiculous engagement, fantastic engagement. That, that 5.6 million, that 5.6 million people are more highly engaged than any television viewer. There's something called the second screen phenomenon, Larry. And the bottom line is this: there is nothing more immediate, more effective to drive ads and drive revenue on behalf of our clients. Okay, you're making money for your clients, Chris, but I guess what he's looking at is the ability of this stock. company to make money that will please shareholders. Exactly. I mean, are we talking apples and oranges here? Not at all. They're doing everything in their power to make Silverback Social's job easy so that we can engage with those individuals quicker, more expeditiously, and more appropriately. They're pandering to more, less sophisticated advertisers with the ad platform. They're making it very easy for mom-and-pop stores all the way up to the enterprise advertisers that we work with to make it super simple for them to spend ad dollars on the Twitter platform. It works. It's effective. It's powerful. But it's not effective because they're not making money doing it, and they have to grow and continue to do it, and I don't see them be able to do it. We're right. going to find out in just about a half an hour, guys. <laughs> yeah. they, uh, apparently, options pricing points was a 15% swing one way or the other, so it's going to be volatile. Thank you both. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Heated argument. Don't miss instant analysis of Twitter's first quarter.